yes sir good evening good evening sir good evening hello good evening jaspinder yes sir good evening uh can you give your brief introduction yes sir uh sir i am jaspinder singh uh, i am from village pullar district shri muksar sahib of punjab and my mother she is housewife my father uh, is a farmer i have done my schooling from shri muksar sahib itself and later on i have done my graduation that is ba llb honors from punjab university chandigarh after that i started preparing for civil services in 2019 and i aspired to become is officer sir. okay thanks yes pender uh, how you feel that uh, you are an ideal fit to be a civil servant Yes, sir. So ideally, uh, first of all, a civil servant he is required to have that uh, quality of leadership, and he's he he must be able to understand the people who he's going to serve, sir. And in my uh, the years that I have lived, uh, so I have uh, in my university I was the president of Moot Court Society. So I, I believe I have that quality of leadership. And again, sir, uh, regarding understanding the people, sir. so uh, while uh, being in university there was like interaction with number of people and cosmopolitan uh, quality quality environment of university and sir and even in the village uh, i have learned this uh, uh, idea of cooperation and uh, learning from the people and then again understanding them so basically a civil servant is required to have leadership and understanding and various other uh, qualities like being honest sir and uh, having a like uptight character sir so uh, i have these qualities so that is why sir okay just been the good to know that uh so as you know uh, you come from punjab uh, basically yes sir mm, uh, as you know the recently uh, the new government has come to power and that yes, to a totally new outfit for punjab earlier it was by terms between uh, congress and akalis so now yes, a sort of tectonic uh, shift has taken place so uh, what do you think how it is going to affect the governance in punjab for good or bad whatever it is and what effect this uh, shift which has taken place uh, sort of a for a new political outfit in punjab how it is going to affect the electorates of uh, other states where elections are going to take place uh, during uh, the course of this year yes sir so first of all with respect to punjab as you said this is a tectonic shift sir uh, after uh, the taking of the turns of uh, shromani akali dal and then congress uh, these there were the two parties and this is a new party into the power uh, that is aam aadmi party so people were having expectations and i think people were not able to uh, 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 like get their demands fulfilled be it the uh, uh, case of drugs or be it the scenario of uh, unemployment so basically that led to this major shift and people are seeing hope in the new party so uh, the uh, the hope is there and uh, the work the new government they have started the work with respect to the corruption they are uh, their promises with respect to the uh, women empowerment in their election manifesto sir yes they uh, they had these promises so let's see how they are going to turn into reality and with this that is the expectations of people of punjab that yes maybe a new party that will be able to uh, turn the things into reality sir their promises into reality and when it comes to how it is going to shift the uh, electro- electoral uh, happenings in the other neighboring states yes sir this is the party which started 10 years back and uh, so it, uh, right now it is ruling uh, basically two states we can say two state assemblies that is delhi and uh, punjab sir and now uh, again uh, since one party is getting weaker and there is one uh, other party so uh, so this party will uh, definitely uh, provide more choice to the people sir it will rather enhance the democracy of our nation sir 
okay the uh, oh, you know the uh, this uh, outfit which came to power the uh, normal public perception is that uh, the kind of uh, populist measures which they which they announced in their manifesto and uh, before the elections like giving 300 units free of cost electricity then uh, allowance to the uh, women and children and uh, all those kind of uh, populist measures initially i think to some extent uh, that is what the uh, popular perception is they succeeded in uh, delhi now uh, there is a plan to implement uh, the same model in uh, punjab uh do you think that uh, it is uh, going to affect the psyche and the attitude uh, of a common man who is going to get this free wheels and second part is that uh, the kind of finances which uh, punjab government uh, has at the moment or they don't have the other part of it uh, how they are going to Uh, fund it, and how it is going to affect uh, the thinking and the output of a common man when he is getting all this in the form of freebies. Yes, sir. So uh, the populist measures as announced by this party, sir, how it is going to affect a common man in that? What is the scenario in our country, sir? Uh, we are having the problems of poverty. We are having the problems of hunger. We are having the problem of women uh, who who are not empowered enough sir so when we see these populist measures so we must also see them through the um, uh, spectacles of uh, empowering the society as well yes they are freebies but uh, they must be rationalized to the extent they are unrational but if we look at uh, the allowance to be given to the women or uh, 300 units of electricity being given to the people of punjab uh, not everybody is able to afford them sir providing this basic amenity is uh, again a social uh, i would say a social uh, reform sir uh, in the society yes they must be rationalized to the extent that we are uh, coming to the second question of yours that we are not having enough funds in our uh, uh, treasure and then we are co- coming up with these uh, populist policies so we must be rational enough to say that uh, from where we are going to get these funds for example sir if 300 units are being given then if above 300 units if somebody is using then there must be the target set that uh, somebody if if he is using up to 500 units then a cost of electricity will be more than again more than that some more so this must be rationalized because people who are at the lower rung they also must get the chance and this is also maybe this is going to uh, uh, do away with the problem of poverty and deprivation as well sir so freebies must be seen from both the angles and they must be rationalized sir so uh, you are for these freebies if i may say so there is nothing wrong with the freebies it's not no nothing wrong sir uh, i uh, differ it's not yes or no the answer lies in that they must be rational freebies means for the people for the society if you have the money enough uh, for the people for distribution so this is a distributive justice sir so you feel that uh, people like say the uh, uh, we and you we should uh, fund for these free we because after all the money is going to be pinched from our pockets and going to be put in uh, uh, these so called uh, deprived uh, segment of the society in their pockets yes sir so we must understand that yes there is deprivation and poverty in our society and if there is if the taxes are going from our pockets then that means that they are to be utilized somewhere and when we see them utilized uh, to the to the needy section basically then uh, the justice is being done sir i would consider it as a justice but again i want to focus more on rationality of these freebies not uh, the like uh, the water that is being wasted for the farmers so not in that way they must be rationalized sir to some extent we need the policy in that manner sir Okay. Uh, I want to uh, have your views on these farm laws, the farm laws which were uh, promulgated last year, and there was a big agitation of more than a year long agitation on that. Uh, what What is your uh, take? Whether those farm laws they were 
beneficial uh, for the farming community as a whole and uh, now uh, the kind of uh, reversal which has taken place uh, as a consequence of uh, this agitation is it in the overall interest of these farmers themselves or they were uh, a misguided uh, lot because of which uh, the government uh, maybe because of political compulsions and all that they had to take back uh, those laws what is your take on this yes sir so agriculture reforms were definitely required and they still are required and when we talk about these three farm laws uh, with respect to uh, open sale of the produce with respect to uh, contract farming and uh, uh, with respect to uh, essential commodities act so these farm, farm laws were required in a sense that we needed uh, some uh, more competition more players in the market who can buy the farmers product but what has happened we have seen this agitation what i can make out of it or when i discuss this with my family we see it from the uh, they, the farmers they see it from the another point or uh, another angle and that is the, these farm laws they were just uh, they just came with uh, uh, just they just came sir and without the discussions and deliberations with the people in uh, general so that that led to uh, the we can say such a big such a huge uh, uh, protest in the uh, at the borders of delhi in punjab and haryana and western uttar pradesh but when we look at the farming as a whole yes other reforms are required and then coming to the repeal of these laws sir so because people if they were not contented at that point of time uh, their problems must be heard and that must be addressed in those laws and if we are able to address by reforming them then they must be reformed or we can say uh, they uh, or they must be amended uh but uh, here the farmers were not satisfied because from the beginning of the coming or uh, of the farm laws into the process uh, there was some uh, l- lack of or make we can say misunderstanding between both the term both the parties so that is why that has led to this uh, taking back of farm laws uh, yes sir okay uh, as you are saying uh, the basic uh, uh, if i will say the mistake Uh, on the part of government was that uh, they were promulgated without any deliberation or feedback from the ground from the farming yes. community as such or from the stakeholders okay but uh, during the course of agitation uh, the government uh, uh, whatever uh, deliberations they had with the uh, uh, agitating farming leaders they were ready to accommodate their view point but they were quite adamant of this fact that uh, this is beyond uh, discussion or deliberation we just want these farm laws to be repealed so what yes, you sir. have to say on that uh, yes sir so when the government was going uh, was accommodating the farmers then the farmers must have also listened to the government that is uh, like there must have been some a uh, middle middle ground in this situation but what has happened the thing which started with the mistrust it led on increasing the mistrust sir so that is why because of too much of uh, like the valley of mistrust in this situation i think both the parties were not uh, uh, the government was changing but the farmers were adamant because it started with lack of discussion and in the democracy sir i think when the deliberation must start when the uh, from the ground level so basically that is why maybe the farmers were not ready to accept those middle grounds but again uh, middle grounds must have been accepted at that point of time because as soon as these reforms occur they are more beneficial to the farmers and the farmers must be made aware of this so there, there was miscommunication as well sir okay uh no uh, uh, we want to have your views on this uh, ongoing uh, conflict between russia and ukraine okay and india's uh, stakes as far as this uh, conflict is going on you know india is uh, uh, has been taking a totally new neutral stand in various uh, international uh, fora as far as this conflict is concerned uh do you feel that uh, it is appropriate or 
we could have gone uh, uh, with the west or we could have gone around uh, and uh, sided with uh, russia which of course has been holding the hands of india uh, historically right after independence be it the kashmir issue or uh, uh, any other uh, issue at uh, the united nations or in various other international uh, uh, fora so we had to repay uh, that uh, uh, debt if i would say to us while ussr and now russia of course that time uh, ukraine was also part of uh, us while ussr but do you feel that this so called neutrality it is in uh, is it ethical and is it uh, in indian interest yes, in the sir. long run yes sir if i may ask uh, for the clarification that i i this the question is about india's stand or uh, I, i also have to explain both the about usa and uh, sorry about uh, ukraine and russia as well no no all of it the, uh, you just uh, uh have to just elaborate uh, based on this conflict uh the genesis in brief and the stand which india has taken uh is it right yes. or we could have gone either with the uh, western bloc or with the uh, russia yes. yes sir thank you for the clarification sir uh sir in this situation uh this 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 is not the matter which started within uh, a day or within a night sir this is this goes back to the disintegration of ussr uh, when ukraine and uh, they all were promised that they will not be attacked and their territorial sovereignty that must be respected at that point of time and they must be denuclearized at that at, at then sir but what happened with the time that uh nato that is uh, north atlantic treaty organization uh, where usa is a major uh, uh, party so that it started expanding and uh, recently uh, ukraine has shown interest into it and russia never wanted that uh, the uh, uh, its sphere of influence to decrease sir. so that is why uh, so russia it attacked right now uh, after crimea so this is like uh, this was after crimea in 2022 that russia attacked ukraine uh they said that this is not a war after 2014 yes sir in 2022 now uh, ukraine has been attacked and uh, they say that this is a special operation of the military where they are going to denazify the donbas region of uh, ukraine sir so with respect to india's stand uh, in this scenario sir india has to look at its national interest uh, after especially Uh, when uh, we are having USA as we are having we are at the peak of our relationship with USA and we do not want to uh, uh, like lighten our relationships with the uh, uh, f- uh, who was friend uh, for uh, forever friend who uh, for with whom we started the friendship uh, not want these both friendships to uh, uh, di- to be diluted and so in the national interest of india what suits us right now that is the diplomatic stance that has been taken by our uh, our country so there we are going right uh, where we are showing a neutral stance and so this has been a history of uh, india where we were not aligned in the cold war towards any of the parties so, so this is a right stand with respect to national interest and also it is showing that we are having uh, uh, independent and independent foreign policy sir okay if that be so uh, but the last uh, voting which has taken place in unhrc uh, yes sir russia uh, is of the view that india having abstained has effectively voted against russia okay yes, and uh, the us uh, and the western uh, allies of us they are of the view that uh, india has not sided with them so riding on these two votes is it uh, going to be in india's national interest in the long term what do you think sir again uh, we cannot say that this has to be this is uh, casted on the rock sir that we have to choose this uh, stance only the point is the national interest must be always looked for and when it comes to uh, no abstaining from the vote uh, having studied uh, 
public international law sir then what has happened when we we are abstaining from the vote we are not the party of neither present and voting term sir so our vote is neither counted sir so that is their opinion of our vote of or of abstaining that we are siding with them but we never we have always said that we are against the violence we are always in for the peaceful settlement of the dispute so that never says that we are siding with the violence or war of uh, russia and ukraine so. okay got it. thank you thank you jaspin thank you sir even jaspin the am i audible yes ma'am jaspin the i see that you are a law graduate you've done your ba llb honors <coughs> and being a law graduate you must be well versed with number of landmark judgments and of course the basic provisions and the enactments can you enlighten me on ds nakara's judgment uh, uh, can i get some time ma'am in this yeah, case sure 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 uh, ma'am ds nakara's judgment this is based upon right to equality and um, basically it was uh, i cannot i cannot recall the year in this case but this was on the basis of uh, doctrine of uh, reasonable classification where uh, there must be a, there a date was set up in this case and uh, the supreme court uh, that the people before this date and after this date will be given pension or something regarding that uh, but supreme court in this case said that there must be a, re- a rational uh, like reasonable uh, uh, classification in this case and intelligible differentia was uh, the term that was used that must be there when we are differentiating but when we are classifying the two uh, the people who are before that date and after the date so there was lack of intelligible differentia in this case and that was the test used in this case ma'am so right of equality is enshrined under which article of the constitution right to equality and equal opportunity uh, in law ma'am article 14 of the indian constitution uh, can you tell me same ma'am uh, uh, that you must have heard after Uh, this agitation on the reservation which was way back in 1990s uh, uh, indra sani's judgment came right uh, ma'am I... uh, am i audible can you hear me yes ma'am uh, after the reservation uh, agitation which took place ma'am your in... voice is fluctuating jaspinda can you hear me now can you hear me uh am i audible now when your voice was fluctuating now could you please uh, repeat yeah i said yes. after the res- uh, reservation agitation which took place yes when in you are audible india indra sani's judgment came what were the principles that indra sani constitutional bench laid down yes ma'am uh ma'am in indra sani's judgment case it is also known as mandal commission uh, judgment Absolutely. and uh, this is the judgment of 1993 yes 1993 and in this judgment if we look at the principles uh, with respect they were, these were with respect to obc uh, reservation and they uh, they reiterated the last judgment of 1960s uh, Balakrishna's judgment, where they said that fifty percent of reservation must uh, not beyond fifty percent. Only in the exceptional circumstances uh, you can go beyond fifty percent. And secondly, they said that the criminal, uh, sorry, criminal layer concept was added, and the criminal layer concept is to be applied in the OBC reservation case. And this is not to be applied in the uh, like this was not said, but uh, again, this is unsaid implication of that uh, in the SC uh, reservations case. and uh, then also ma'am they talked about the uh, data collection uh, uh, i'm not able to recall the exact word that there must be a data uh, well uh, data before giving the reservation sir that is quantifiable data but that did uh, indra sani didn't say that it was uh, subsequently in jarnail singh's case and bk pavitra's case that quantifiable data which the states have to collect yes ma'am before Yes, ma'am. Uh, also, in the Nagra's judgment in two thousand and seven, when Indra Sani's judgment was uh, reinterpreted, and then at that point of time, this was uh, used for the first time in two thousand and seven. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
you must have he heard of article 370 there was so much news was in circulation can you tell me did the government and the legislatures actually did away or repealed article 370 or did they make it inoperative and what actually article and if it was made inoperative what were the reasons for making it inoperative why it could not be repealed as such yes yes ma'am ma'am 370 itself was used to make 370 inoperative because um, the heading of that very article it's uh, it was re regarding that these are uh, this is the temporary uh, setup that is being made and uh, they used this article because uh, there was mentioned that uh, uh, at any point of time the president uh, with the uh, with the recommendation of the state legislature uh, they can uh, make all the provisions of the constitution and the laws of india applicable on jammu and kashmir and in this case there was no state legislature so 367 was uh, again amended which meant that uh, state legislature can also in the absence of state legislature mean that governor and uh, uh, when he is uh, advised by the cabinet secretary so these two were the basis of using uh, 367 uh, and 370 were the basis of using 370 to dilute 370 itself and uh, yes ma'am it was done because uh, as a government of india in its uh, reasons uh, reasons um, in the parliament they gave this that uh, jammu and kashmir is integrate integral part of india and uh, it has left behind in the development because of uh, uh, like uh, these the special constitution that it has and it it needs indian constitution especially with respect to the tribal areas which are not recognized especially with respect to those who are deprived in the uh, region and with respect to again uh, we it shares the border with uh, jammu uh, with pakistan and so we required the integration of the uh, of our very state into our uh, constitution uh, can you can you enlighten us uh, something on the new Uh, this amendment which has recently been made in the medical termination of pregnancy act uh, can i get some time ma'am to recall it sure uh, ma'am uh, thank you ma'am ma'am the amendment that was made uh, recently it it was to uh, basically earlier what was the condition that there was uh, 24 weeks if i can recall it uh, rightly uh, uh, so uh, now it has been shifted to 24 weeks of pregnancy where the uh, women can uh, have the termination of the pregnancy uh, on, on her own uh, uh, with her own, own will and also in the case what has been done is that after 20 after 24 weeks uh, ma'am if the uh, like 24 is the uh, uh, time like that period so after uh, this period there will be a state medical board uh, who whose authority uh, is to be used to get the uh, get the child terminated or the pregnancy term has been uh, this helps to get uh, reproductive rights where on where where uh, they can have their uh, rights whether they're going right or not uh, so that has been little gray areas yeah hello jaspinda hello ma'am am i audible to you yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am okay uh jaspinder i was going through your form and i just came to know you read gurbani yes ma'am okay so would you take it as a uh, religious uh, activity or spiritual one? and how would you differentiate uh, the religious point of uh, you know view and the spiritual point uh ma'am this is um, like this is there is no bifurcation for me when we when i talk about religion and uh, spiritual for me what is spiritual is religious but uh, when we say that whether i do it for the religious purpose or for the spiritual 
purpose the more inclination goes towards the uh, uh like uh, towards getting the answer of my questions with respect to getting uh, being grounded and uh, at at times when you are uh, uh, hyper or at times when you are low so you uh, where you get your answers that is gurbani and uh, so a spiritual uh, upliftment of my soul we can say of my uh, yes ma'am that is it for what i do okay would you feel peace after uh, reading gurbani am i audible ma'am yeah you are audible am i yes ma'am okay would you feel yes, peace yes, yes, after yes. reading gurbani uh ma'am could you please repeat yeah i am asking would you feel peace after reading gurbani the part of gurbani yes ma'am absolutely ma'am Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, Jaspinder, are you familiar with the uh, V-shaped economic recovery? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Explain it. Uh, ma'am, when we talk about V-shaped econ- economic recovery, so this is with respect to the graph of economy when uh, economy uh, falls. and then it immediately or within a lesser span of time the it 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 moves on the shape of recovery and uh, it catches its earlier pace after a fall very uh, uh, in a very uh, urgent manner unlike u shape recovery where the uh, where the economy takes some time to recover and in case of india it was said that we will be doing a v shape uh, economic recovery but we ha- we suffered from second and third waves of covid and uh, so this econ- uh, this recovery couldn't be said to be v shape rather it became a w shape uh, or as uh, the economic advisor he says this is a zigzag n shape uh, or sorry z shape re- re- recovery Okay, just remember we got um, connection. Ma'am, ma'am, I've done. Uh, finished. Hello. Yes, you can hear us, right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I can hear. Which factors support, uh, you know, V-shaped economic recovery, and which factors support K-shaped economic recovery? Yes. Can ma'am. you elaborate? When we talk. Uh, when we talk about v shape economic recovery uh, we are talking about indian context right now right yes. yeah yeah indian economy yes ma'am when we talk about uh, v shape economic recovery so when uh, the uh, immediate uh, steps that were taken by the indian government which helped uh, the poor to uh, get, through pm kalyan uh, grip grip kalyan yojana and then there were uh, steps where 500 rupees were given basically that was putting money in the hands of people at the bad time so that the demand doesn't fall so basically to increase the demand at that point of time uh giving the money uh, even to the uh, construction workers 3000 rupees were deposited in their account and uh, so uh, these measures were taken and when we look at the msme sector there also the steps were taken where we uh, have uh, uh, we can say we have delayed their uh, uh, giving back the loans uh, we have delayed that and then again uh, we have asked them that you can take more, uh, more loans and we have redefined the msmes with respect to so that they can uh, expand and increase their horizon and uh, these were various steps that were taken for the v shaped economic recovery but when we look at the k shaped economic recovery then uh, we can see that various incentives were gi- are given to the uh, Uh, to those who are at the top uh, level uh, with respect to uh, we can say the business class uh, uh, so when they are uh, they were given certain uh, incentives after the covid be it uh, uh, expansionary monetary policy of country can up by the few chunk who are the businessmen 
and when we look look at the people at the lower lower rung of the society uh, still we're not able to provide them with the employment and uh, with the basic facilities so that led to uh, like uh, a one one uh, curve going downwards that is the, the those who are at the lower rung of the society so uh, the, that is the k shaped recovery okay uh yeah jaspinder uh, tell me can we get back to the same trajectory of growth rate of 9% per annum in 2003 4 you know and uh, can we get it back definitely ma'am we can get it back looking at the demography of india looking at uh, the prospects uh, which indian uh, which which uh, the, the the schemes with which the government has come especially with respect to uh, boost to infrastructure uh, setup right now in the budget 2022 2023 so uh, again gati shakti yojana these all are in the line of having more infrastructure and infrastructure will be having a ripple effect in the society which we had at that point of time uh, with pms gramin sadak yojana at that point of time and now we are having that uh, gati shakti yojana or nip national infrastructure pipeline so yes ma'am uh, i am very much uh, positive about it that we can achieve that and uh, but again there are questions with respect to uh, the ukraine crisis or the rising oil prices we need to take care of these things as well but yes definitely we can reach that goal okay. uh you know inflation numbers have been beyond the rbi tolerance of 6% you know that uh what do you uh, say about it uh, it is because of demand pull factors or supply factors you please elaborate it uh yes ma'am uh, ma'am there was fluctuation but yes i understood the question whether the inflation is with respect to demand pull or cost pull in inflation cost yes push. cost push inflation so uh ma'am uh, this is the combination Yes, ma'am. Right now, the, the 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 inflation is combination of both. Uh, when we look at the demand, yes, there was pent up demand during the uh, COVID lockdown, and now the lockdown is opening, and yes, demand is increasing. And at the same point of time, when we look at the cost push inflation, the cost is rising because the inflation uh, of the basic uh, products with respect that is oil due to the uh, foreign effect. The oil is uh, Ukraine uh, crisis. The oil prices are also very high. again uh, uh, the other uh, supply chain resilience which we are working on there also uh, the work is required to be done so the, uh, both are the factors that are required to be taken care of okay do you know something about this uh, you know modern monetary theory uh, sorry ma'am i am not aware okay. i think it's uh jaspinder i will ask just one question in your uh, introduction you said that this is who you are this is where you come from this is what your mother and your father this is what they do and you want to be an ias officer now my question to you is if you are allocated any other yes. service apart from ias or for that matter even ips or uh, IAS, sir uh, once again please repeat yes so i said that in your introduction you said so that you want to, like can you hear me now Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, could you please Just repeat? Just one question from my side. In your introduction, you said that this is who you are, this is where you come from, and you want to be an IS officer. Yes, sir. If you are allocated any other service apart from IS, IPS or IFS, would you take it, or would you? would you take the exam again uh okay sir uh, the last part uh, i just i could hear would you uh, up to would you take it uh, so with respect to becoming ias officer and and uh, taking the job uh, sir had i been allocated uh, any other services since i have uh, hard for becoming ias officer the service that has that being uh, right now keeping my age 
I will be taking the job and I will be working for it. But at the same point of times, I will be have definitely prepare for becoming an IS officer as it has been my childhood. Okay, Sundar, thank you so much for your time, and we'll get back to you very soon with the feedback. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay bye. bye. All the best. Bye, bye, sir. Thank you. All the best. Thank you.